my painters, it's Deborah. Um, we are going to be doing a galaxy sky. I'm going to show you uh, using galaxy colors. I'm going to do a deep magenta. This is golden alizarin crimson. Um, you can use whatever actually it's like a dark purple you can use whatever colors you'd like to use but the idea is to have a pretty solid base on your canvas as you get started um i want to just say this is canvas panel it's been gessoed one time uh you need to have that good coating of gesso just so you make sure that your paint goes on well we're also going to be using some cadmium yellow medium and mars black of course we are using phalo green or this is phalo blue in the green shade. So you're going to need, oh, this is going to be messy. You're going to need phalo blue. And we'll put our black over here. The tools we're using today are going to be a little different. It'll be fun. Fun, fun, fun. Oh, and one more color. I've got quinacrium violet because I need a magenta. So there we go. So, uh, and these are all a varied mix. Who do we have here? Gembacher, which is not bad, Academy. We also have Golden. We have Golden. Um, Liquitex, Liquitex, all in the same family, all the same family of colors. This is Golden's Open. It's part of their new line. This is also Phalo Blue Golden's open. So what they mean by open is they don't dry as fast. They stay open longer so that you can manipulate the paint if you have to. It doesn't dry as quick. So the deal between oil painting and acrylic painting is that we've got a drying factor of like <laughs> 15 minutes, 24 hours, and the other is like three days. So you've got 48 hours with oil paint. Um, and this, gosh, this is from the art store a hundred years ago. That's really nice. Okay, so our tools. A sponge of some sort. A toothbrush for the stars. I've got a three-fourths inch flat. Very important for your background. I've got a 12 inch flat. And a fine liner just in case I want to do a little. And some towelettes, fresh water, and your rinse cup. Mine's over here. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I'm doing a little bit of water on my brush, taking the excess off. I'm going to load my paint with two colors. I am not mixing the two colors, but I am going to have two colors on my brush. And this is just so that we can start putting in the sky. And it'll give us a variation. And this finish is really nice. And you can see that my panel is picking a color. I do a small cross hatch so I can get all of the. You can use even a larger brush than this if you wanted. Um, there are some jumbo brushes out there, but. The one inch brush 
and three quarter inch brush right now is working for us really well. So we're gonna apply some more paint color down. We're going to go and cover our whole canvas with this background. Add a tad of water. We're going to lay down a nice coat of this dark. You can add some water if you want to bring it. There we go. Now this paint goes a long way, so you can keep loading your brush and hitting it with just a touch of water. To get it to cover for you. And you'll soon notice that we've got light and dark areas on our canvas, which are going to play really well in the sky. Light and dark. And I'm going right onto the canvas with my water because I can control, especially down here, because this is going to be a mountainscape. Um, I can control the water. We've got enough canvas for it to absorb into. Yeah, a little, yeah, it's not. Okay, more water, and this is fresh water. In the blue green shade, this is phthalo blue green shade, it's golden. You can see its colors and The whole idea with a galaxy sky is you've got lights and darks, but you got to have a deep, nice base. That's what we'll call it. A nice base. And it allows you to kind of go over. Move this around a bit. More water. At some point, I really don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to lose any of this paint because it's super nice, covers well, gives you great depth of color when you get it down there. I'm cross hatching again. This cross hatch will go right into the grooves, covering up any of your white patches you might have left, like I did here. Okay.
hope you take this time to relax and enjoy the paint world. Um, we've all kind of had to find things that were going to keep us busy. Um, I tried to do a few projects here and there. And then I try to post for you so you have an opportunity to learn something while we're staying home. I think that's great. Especially those of us that have always wanted to paint and really did not have the opportunity. This is it. Grab whatever you have. You can literally paint on top, do this very same painting on this paper plate. I talked about it in my tips and tricks with gesso. If you gessoed this palette, I might do a speed video. Um, and show you that on a paper plate because it would be cool right after this one. Let's go do a little bit. more of our purple in this area again this is going to be jet black we don't have to worry about it okay i let's hit up our sides i did mention this is a canvas panel this is not 11 by 14 canvas this is 11 by 14 canvas panel you can find it at the art store um you can order a kit from me if you'd like, and it'll come with everything you need. But at this point, I am showing you all on a canvas panel. Okay, that to me, wait, I'm gonna get these strokes to look more like, oh, let's see. I'm gonna get these strokes to kind of blend a little better. Go the opposite direction. Looks like I was digging in. There we go. Okay, this is it. I think it looks fantastic right now for a night sky. Uh, if you put a little too much water on your brush, just soak it up with your towelette, your towel. Go back into the crosshatch while well, everything is still wet it'll pick up a little bit more paint you can you can take that into these areas okay great i'm gonna dry this and i will yeah that looks fantastic i'll be back okay we're back and i've completed drying um i think it came out great so we're going to start with the sponge effect, and we're going to start putting in a little bit of that same color, only this time we're dabbing it in with our sponge. And you don't want your sponge too, too wet. And I think what I'm going to do is pour out just a bit more of this color and there we go. Come on, phalo. There we go. Um, then I'll take Let's see, we cleaned out our brush. We've got some clean water. I'm placing some water on my sponge because I would like to have a little bit of paint. So what we're doing is almost the same thing we did with the brush. We're dabbing. Dabbing, dabbing with your sponge, two colors, twisting your wrist. This adds another layer from the first layer and it allows us to put the third layer, which is several other colors. 
Okay, we're going to go over that. And let's do a little bit of this. Again with the water. Now I'm really careful with the water because we don't want it to run. But we do want to get color in there. And stroke any of the, the um, bristles that might have come off. You can just um, remove them as you're working your sponge. And the sponge breaks up <clears throat> little bits. I mean, the sponge itself doesn't break up, but it breaks up the circular motion that you're doing. So now I'm going to take some of this white, some of this pink, and I'm going to go in twisting. Okay, got the kitty off there. So now what you see is a little magenta, dark sky, some white. And Now I'm just going to dab this in because you know that stars are in clusters, right? So let's get some water on this. This is the rough side of the sponge. Some of them come with this like little interesting Brillo pad. It makes for a really cool pattern in the sky. And then you dab on top of that to sort of mute it out. Okay. Because there are sections of the galaxy that are much more intense than others. We've seen that. Just as the sky appears to be darker in some places than others. Okay. Okay. So now that gives us some focus. I'm also I'm going to take a little bit of this yellow and a little bit of this white. Not too much of that. But I'm going to go over those areas where I put in the first layer of white, twisting and kind of turning with the greenish part of my, the Brillo part of the sponge. And you can see that it's actually giving it a different effect, which is what we want. We need to add some depth to that. Okay, then we'll go back in now with some pink. Same same process, bristly part of the sponge, white, take some of it off, and start twisting in areas. And if you get too heavy with it, we're going to flip the sponge around and blot it, just like this. Okay. Flipping the sponge. There we go. Okay. Now, 
Now I'm going to show you the star effect. Because again, down here we're going to have our mountains. So this is going to be pretty cool. Or you can make them go up and cover some of that. Um, but yeah. Let's mute this out just a bit. Just by twisting your wrist. All right. Now, um, once again, I'm taking my large brush and I'm putting a blotter of water. And let's see, I'm going to use my number 12. I think number 12, this is clean water. You've got to liquefy your white. They do have a medium, a white medium, that you can use instead of this. They do get kind of expensive. So I just, I'm going to use water. And I'm going to show you a technique where you take your large brush and you take this number 12 and you splatter. I like this a lot. I feel it gives a really even look to your stars. We're not placing them in by hand and we're not jumping on it too hard because then you tend to get like kind of like firecracker streaks. But if it's just runny enough, see? It's just enough. Now, the interesting thing is that not all stars are all white. So we're going to take a little bit of this yellow. We're going to mix some of that with the water. Clean that off there. And go right into it. Not as heavy as the white, I would, th I would say. We're doing our mountains last, obvious reasons. We don't want any splatter on them. There we go. Oh my God, I like the way this came out. Okay. And let's see, what other color? We'll do our darkest, this dark sort of a blue again. It makes a green which is okay. Stars are different colors. And they make them, a, this is coming out a little bit smaller. Seems to be all right. We want them in the very far, far back anyway, because they are um, a different color. There we go. Now we're going to let this dry. And I want you to notice the interesting thing is some of these are larger, which is perfect because some of the star clusters are larger. 